So um, by adding this as the return to get autonomous command, uh, drive forward timed is now set to be uh, my default command. So if we kicked into gameplay right now, uh, my robot would do that drive forward uh, timed command. Now, obviously, that's not, you're not probably just going to have one autonomous command, and you probably want commands that you can select from Smart Dashboard. Um, in a future lesson, we'll probably update this to be a command group, uh, which then we could maybe do a drive forward time, data shoot to it. Um, obviously, you should be adding sensors to your subsystem so you could have, say, range finders and things like that. Uh, but for the sake of this video, we really don't have time to kind of handle all of those things, vision tracking and everything else. This is just an introductory video. So um, we have that there, and that could work if I was a rookie team and I just had to cross a line, that would work. Now, I do have some extra commands that now I kind of want to get rid of because they're kind of garbage. Um, I don't want to have this example command. I don't want to have this example subsystem. So let's just delete some stuff that I don't want. And then it's going to cause a few errors. We're going to clean this up, and then we're going to try and build our code uh, and finish off this project. So we have this example subsystem here. Let's just nuke it. Right-click on it. Make sure you right-click on the right subsystem. Don't delete our drivetrain. And let's delete that. Move to recycle bin. Sure, that's gone. I don't want this example command either. That was a nice template thing, but we're going to nuke that too. Okay, move to recycle bin. And now if I scroll up in my robot container, my guess is I have a few errors here. Uh, what do I have? Yeah, I want, I don't know what those ones came from. I have two example commands right here that I want to get rid of. Example subsystem and M auto command, example command. Let's nuke those. And then all I have at the top that I actually want to get rid of now is those things that were made in the template example command import it doesn't exist anymore so let's get rid of that and let's get rid of this frc robot subsystems example and hopefully if i just go file save all and we now build our project hopefully we're in business and our project builds and it should be able to do two things for us right now in this current state it should be able to drive with joysticks okay in teleop and it should drive forward for three seconds in autonomous. So let's just first of all build our robot code, make sure we have no errors. You can watch the execution down here. It looks like it built successfully, that is good. Uh, and then if I wanted to actually deploy to my robot, okay, if I was connected to my robot's Wi Fi and I wanted to deploy or, or tethered to my robot, I could deploy through this deploy robot code. Um, that would work just fine. Um, but we have actually another option this year that's kind of handy is that we actually have a good simulator on um, Visual Studio Code or linked into the libraries that's going to allow us to actually have a GUI and see what's going on. And I have a controller hooked up, so let's kind of test that and see what's going on. So if I come up here and I click there on that WPA, they're inside there. Now mine's in recent. Yours might not be in recent. You might have to do some searching for this. But notice that we have this simulate robot code on desktop. So let's give that a crack. So I'm just going to run that. And what do we get? So we get this little Halsim GUI DLL. And that's what we want. It's the only option. So I'm going to pick it. And I'm going to click OK. And let's see what we get. So let's see if that simulator is going to launch. Well, it looks not too bad to me. So we have a kind of a simulator launched here. Now, one thing that you're going to notice is when you get into here, it's got your modes just like uh, you would see in the drive station, disable autonomous teleop and test. Uh, it's got a, our Xbox controllers here. Now, what you need to do is notice that it's got joystick, joystick zero unassigned. This is one little step you need to do in the simulator is you need to drag that over there and drop our Xbox controller in there. Okay, now, I could play with that. You could probably see some values from my axis 1 and 0. That's a good sign in joysticks. Um, but what I want to see is I want to see if my PWMs are actually operating properly. So the first thing I'm going to test is teleop. Okay, so let's check. Actually, let's test autonomous first. Let's see what happens when I enable autonomous. Let's see what happens to our PWM values over here. 
if I hit autonomous, 0.15 and 0 0.15 are negative 0 0.15. So if I run that again, if I go disable again, this is going to run for three seconds because that's what we have it set to. It looks like that's what it's doing. Autonomous, 0.15 and negative 0.15. And they're alternating. So which ones were running the same? Well, you had, I think it's zero and two were running the same and one and three. So let's look at that. Zero and two and one and three. Well, let's take a look if those are the right uh, PWMs. So zero and two, if we look inside constants and I say, okay, left should have been zero and two and right should have been one and three. So that looks good, okay. Now, we're getting negative values there, and we should have been going forward. Now, that doesn't mean that negative values are necessarily bad. Um, it could be that that's what they need to be, and they might need to be uh, inverted, being on the other side. Um, but let's just pretend that our motors didn't need to, we don't want to have negative values here. Um, and right now, if I actually ran this, and there was no need, if I ran that again, we'd see our robot would probably turn. Right? It would definitely turn and rotate because only one side, one side would be go for, going forward and one side going back. And we want our autonomous to go straight forward. So let's just invert those two that are negative. Let's invert those motors. Okay, so I think one and three need to be inverted. So let's just disable. Let's go back over here. And let's go to our drivetrain where we created those sparks. And we said we we're going to try inverting one and three. So one and three are what? One and three are the right motors. So inside drivetrain, I'm going to do all, I'm going to invert the ones that are right. So I'm going to change that to set inverted to true. And then I'm going to go to the right back. I'm going to set inverted to true there. Okay. I'm going to go file save all okay and then we are going to actually i'm going to just stop this for now and close that i'm going to build my robot code that's good okay so that built successfully and then let's relaunch that uh simulator oh wrong place right here Simulate robot code. I'm going to do that. I'm not sure if I needed to actually relaunch this thing. If I could just refresh it, click there, click OK. GUI should start popping up. OK, and we got Xbox controller reset. Now, if I kick in autonomous, what's going to happen? Oh, we all we get a straight, all my motors are operating at, at 0.15 for three seconds. So that was the desired effect. Okay, so that's good. So let's test the teleop. Okay, so I'm gonna click in teleop. And now I'm just gonna hold on my left stick straight forward. Okay, so straight forward. Okay, so we're getting a negative value there. Okay, and then I'm gonna press straight back. Okay, we're getting a full negative there. Now, what I would say about this is that inverting again doesn't make much sense. And probably, but we are getting values from everything. If I go straight to the right, that's what it looks like. Straight to the left. Until you actually get on your robot, it's really hard for you to actually tell, well, do they need to be a positive or negative value uh, depending on the placement of your robot. But what we do know is that they are doing as expected. When I go forward, everything's registering a same value. When I go back, everything is registering the same value, and it's okay. They might have to register, register right motor negative and left motor positive, but we know where to invert them now if they're not going properly. I can go to the right. Those are opposite. One should be going forward, one should be going back. One set should be going forward, and one should be going back. So we're programmed properly. The only thing that I would say is until you actually get on the robot, you don't know which ones to invert. One thing to be careful of, and when you get on your robot as well, is I would probably do one motor at a time. So what I would do, I'm just going to close the simulator here, is I probably would code out a set of these motor controllers or 
comment out or set to zero or something a set of these motor controllers here run your left front see if when you press forward it goes forward okay and just work through your motor so you're not running especially if you're in a gearbox with two motors on the same gearbox you want to make sure things are going the right direction so so you don't cause some problems okay uh, anyways though we know that our robot is actually working uh, and so that's going to be the kind of basic end to that we have uh, a drivetrain that should be operational we have a really simple autonomous drive forward command um, and so a good introduction uh, next couple of videos um, probably going to add things like a um, few more subsystems maybe a command group for your autonomous command and uh, maybe a sendable chooser in there as well so that we can choose in smart dashboard our um, autonomous mode that we want to be in anyways good first tutorial hopefully you learned a bit from this um, there's obviously a lot of advanced features that have been left out um, but this is a good starting point for any rookie team or new programmer see you in the next video